Well, the A's had yesterday off, so from their last game to today's <laughs> deadline, they made two major moves, including acquiring right-handed pitcher Joe Boyle from the Cincinnati Reds in exchange for a left-handed pitcher right there, Sam Mole, and international pool money. They also acquired right-handed pitcher Chad Patrick from the Arizona Diamondbacks in exchange for that man right there, Jace Peterson, as well as cash considerations. The trade deadlines for a lot of teams brings uncertainty to players. They never know what to expect. And this is from Tony Kemp yesterday. I'm not sure what to make of the <laughs> emotional face, the weepy face, the sad face. Maybe he thought he was getting <laughs> dealt. Turns out he didn't. A lot of people also expected, Stu, that his wife, Michelle, is due, we think, in sometime in August uh, with mm -hmm. another child for the family, that maybe he was getting uh, sentimental about that. Turns out we don't think it had anything to do with that either. Uh, it was just that maybe Tony Kemp got a whisper that he was getting moved. Obviously, he didn't. Uh, the A's were not buyers. We knew that. I guess they were sellers here. You know, <laughs> We're, we're, we're not an upper division team, so we are definitely sellers. But, and, but not to a large degree, though. No, you know? it, it, and it wasn't. Um, and I'm actually surprised more players oh. um, did not leave. I, I was expecting that there would be um, really good interest for, for Blackburn. I think that uh, Paul Blackburn is one of the better right. um, starters in baseball right now um, at this time. Uh, whether you put him at, in, in a third slot, which he probably fits well in a third or fourth, maybe even a fifth starter for some teams, but... He's in that area. I think he would do a tremendous job for some of these teams that are pitching poor right now. Um, and but Sam Mole was a name that I brought up, yeah. and, and I assumed that he would not be here, and he's not. Yeah. Um, Peterson is a surprise for me. I did not have his name as one of the guys that um, would would continue to be here. Um, you know, there may have been some talk. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of names that are thrown around. And making trades work really, it has to do with the combination of whether you can make a deal. Um, and if you can align the right players to right. make a deal. And so, you know, Blackburn being here doesn't mean the teams didn't want him. It may be that the ask was too big too from the A's or you just couldn't get that right player alignment. And so um, there are players here that would definitely be able to help other baseball teams. But, I mean, the fortunate thing is that these guys get an opportunity to remain here and try to finish out this year and help this team win as many games as they can. Blackburn, Brown, Laureano, Kemp, just some of the few that come to mind that could have been dealt in a different situation but did not. As for what the A's required in return, Chad Patrick, 24 years old, 4-7 and seven with a 4-7-1 ERA, 19 starts this year in AA, including 90 strikeouts in 91 and two-thirds innings pitched. He was drafted in the fourth round in 2021. Joe Boyle's 23. He's got a 6-5 and five record of 4-5-0 ERA, 19 starts, also in double-A this season, 122 strikeouts in 84 innings pitched. I see what the A's are going for right there, a high strikeout rate per innings pitch. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's a those lot. Are some, those are some impressive numbers yeah. for the amount of innings pitched, without a doubt. And Chad Patrick, I have to admit, I don't know a lot about this young man, but my guess would be it's probably his first year in AA, and sometimes there's an adjustment in your first year of AA, and, and so the numbers are what they are. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the scout reports and the statistics, the analytics are, are along the lines of what would make the A's want a player um, of that nature. Here's what the Oakland skipper Mark Kotze said about the team's departures. Yeah, I'll start with Sammy. Um, you know, Sammy being here for, you know, he really grew up in this organization. So, um, you know, to see Sammy go, you know, you're, it, it's kind of bittersweet. You're, you're happy for him. He's going to a contending team. He's got a chance to, you know, be in a pennant race and uh, have impact for that, that Reds ball club. Um, you know, I think overall, I, I, I'm happy for him. Um, you know, on, on Jace's end, you know, as well, a uh, veteran player that, that you know, it's bounced around a little bit. We kind of joked last night, Jason and I, about who had more uniforms hanging in their closet now. So I still think I own him uh, with seven total. But, um, you know, Jace wanted to obviously, you know, stay here and, and, and do some special things with this group. But, um, you know, he's getting a chance as well to, to go to a Diamondback team that's, you know, leading the division and, and uh, going to possibly play in a, in a playoff series. And I think Jay's going to really help that ball club. We'll glance at some other deadline deals. Verlander acquired from the Mets by the Astros. Our former friend on the A's, Mark Canna, 
uh, going to the Brewers, Rich Hill going to the Padres, Paul Seawald going from the Mariners to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and A.J. Pollock, also a player sold by the Mariners, he's coming to the San Francisco Giants. Your thoughts on maybe what team made the best moves here? Yeah, I thought that Texas did. I thought that the moves that Texas made, they added some starting pitching, they got some more depth in their bullpen. Um, the, they were already a team that offensively had done a lot when they added, um, you know, Marcus Simeon and um, what's my shortstop's name? Seager. And Seager. Um, and so now they've really rounded this team off. I think that their starting rotation is deep. Yeah. But they had to do something because for all that they've done and how well they played, they were only one game in front of the Houston Astros. I was about to say. And the Astros have been depleted. Their starting rotation has never pitched all together this year, and they've been hurt position player-wise all year. So when these guys come back and the addition of Verlander, it could make them the team to beat in the West. It's a Texas two-step right now in terms of the standings. Both those teams are fighting for every inch they can get.